But we're going to start with, and as she plummets in the polls, plummets in the polls, and as the party's uh, favours, as, as the, I guess that the tide goes out on, on the Labour Party from all polling, um, Labour has to decide how do we stop the pain? How do we shore up this leaky boat? And it would appear to me that really, rather than kindness, they've gone back or trying to get back to their traditional roots, and that is being the party of the smoko room, not the Koru club. And part of that, of course, means saying we're working class. We uh, were born on the West Coast in the mining terms, and uh, we believe that labour rather than capital drives an economy and drives people's happiness. Well, uh, the Prime Minister, obviously these are the talking points they're on about because the Prime Minister has come out swinging at banks, particularly the big banks. And you've been living under a rock if you don't realise the Prime Minister has been tut-tutting at banks for heaven forfend making a profit. My God, how dare they have the temerity to run a successful business, which... uh, you know, I don't know, legally, as far as I know, too, the banks uh, aren't like robber barons. But she says there's going to be, there's going to be a, um, there's going to be an inquiry into the banks. Like we have an inquiry into, you know, supermarkets and petrol prices, and nothing really ever changes. But let's get back to the start of this. Is the government's criticism of particularly the big banks for making mega profits, is it justified? Um, I'm no banker, I'm no economist, and I'm certainly no associate professor from Massey University on banking and finance, like my first guest this morning, Claire Matthews, who joins us now. Claire, welcome to the platform. Nice to have you with us. Morena, Sean. All right, first up, is there anything wrong for it with a bank or any other business, to your mind, in making a profit and a good one? Absolutely not. And I will always argue in the terms of banks that we absolutely want them to make a profit because the opposite is that they make a loss and that would be a disaster. What do banks... And I'm sorry, I am going to go back this, basically. What do banks do? How do they make their profit? What is the service primarily that they offer, the banks that the Prime Minister's talking about? Well, they actually provide a number of services. One is that they uh, take in deposits from people that have got surplus funds and lend those out to people that need to borrow money for whatever reason to buy a house to build a business. And they keep the margin in the in, in between the two interest rates that they charge and pay. They offer a variety of payment services so, so that we can pay for the goods and services that, that we want to purchase. Um, that's less profitable. They, there's not a lot of fees on that these days, but that's certainly something that they're doing. Uh, for businesses particularly, they provide a lot of additional services to assist them with their businesses, uh, particularly around international. Um, so they provide international funds, international payments, um, and a variety of services like that. All right. Have banks in New Zealand in the recent history operated legally? within the bounds of the law and reasonably? To the best of my knowledge, they have. There have been one or two issues that have been picked up when um, FMA and RBNZ have looked at some of the things that the banks do, but there's been nothing that has been uh, substantially illegal. It's been things that perhaps haven't been going quite to the letter of the law um, or quite to the letter of the regulation, but they've been uh, dealt with and there's no significant issues. All right. Have banks in New Zealand, the major trading banks, been making profits that are out of line with expectations here or overseas? Have they been making hyper profits or not? To an extent, that's a matter of opinion. Uh, In my view, no, they haven't. If you look at their return on capital, it's around 14%, give or take. Um, That's not out of line with what other businesses are doing in New Zealand. And they do need to make a reasonable return on their capital that's invested. So, I don't think they're making exceptional profits. Uh, it's simply that because they are such large organisations, when you look at it in dollar terms, it's a large number, and that's what makes people upset. Well, I guess it makes that can make for a large headline too when that's what you're looking for as a political leader, isn't it? 
Oh, absolutely. And the reality is that people don't like banks. Um, that's that's been going on for a very long time in New Zealand. And so when it looks like they're making excessive profits because it's a big number, it's very easy to complain about those. And then if you're looking as a politician for something to um, appeal to a the general public, then to come down on banks is uh, an easy way of doing it. Right, so it's a cheap trick. Now, the Prime Minister is mumbling about an inquiry, an investigation. When did we last have one of those? Uh, we haven't really had a, a really big one into the banks. We've had um, some conduct things that the Reserve Bank of the FMA have done, and there's various things that they're looking at all the time. Um, I'm not, it depends what sort of an inquiry. I, I don't think we need something like the Royal Commissions that they've had in Australia. Potentially some sort of a Commerce Commission inquiry, similar to what they've done into the supermarkets and fuel companies, yep. might be something that could be done to better understand actually how the banks make their money and whether there is any evidence that they're doing, uh, making uh, excessive charges. All right, but there's no evidence that they're excessively charging. Is the Prime Minister just making this up then, Claire? Oh, I'm not sure that she's making it up. She's simply uh, responding to public concerns. Well, well is she? Uh, have we seen an uptick in complaints against banks? I don't think we've seen an uptick. We've simply seen an ongoing um, level of complaints. All right. So some could say she's just vote farming or looking to make herself look good. In, in my view, it, it seems largely to be a response to the fact that she'd come out of a Labour Party conference that... You know, West Tech announced a really large profit on the back of ANZ's large profit in dollar terms. Um, there'd been some noises from members of the public, and she's got an election coming up, and potentially the polls aren't looking so good, so this is something that um, looks really good. Well, that's... OK, I hear what... I think we all hear what you're saying there, Claire. Um, one thing that is, you know, we've had, had uh, Adrian Orr reappointed for five... Uh, another five-year term yesterday. Um, what does that mean for the banks? What does that mean for our, our financial system? And will that move be welcome, do you think? Well, evidence so far is that um, it doesn't seem to be welcomed. Um, and I'm not sure why um, exactly. To me, I'm not sure, I'm not convinced that Adrian has done a really a, a poor job. Um, he's faced some particularly difficult times. With hindsight, it's easy to say that maybe he got some things wrong, but let's face it, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Yeah. At the time, if you're dealing with a crisis, you've got to do what you can at, with the best. It's not unusual for a Reserve Bank Governor to get a second term, um, and it's it would be um, challenging to suggest that uh, the, the politicians should get involved because the reality is that the Reserve Bank is independent, and unless he's done something egregiously wrong, then there's no reason to not reappoint yeah. him. I wonder, so, Claire, in, interestingly, if the, if the controversy or the criticism of Orr's reappointment isn't the same sort of political dog whistle that the Prime Minister's attack on the trading banks is. You just attack him because he's the incumbent government's appointment. Oh, I, I'm sure that that's an element of it from the from the um, opposition politicians that because the oppos uh, because the government is reappointing him, um, and because people will complain because of some of the things that are happening, um, that they can put at his door, even if it's not fair to do so. Uh, it makes it easy to um, yeah, generate uh, stories and to get some um, comment going. Absolutely. Oh, you're a cynic. Um could I also ask, just in kind of conclusion, um, as you said, quite a easy to whip up antagonism towards trading banks. Truth is clear, if we didn't have those companies here in New Zealand, they, and they are very invested, they're as invested as us in New Zealand because they're lending us money for our houses and everything. If we didn't have them, what would our economy look like if they all up sticks and walked out tomorrow? Well, it would be extremely challenging for the economy. The reality is that the way the economy now operates, um, you, you can't manage to do payments or anything else without the banks. And you need some sort of a, an intermediary in terms of providing funding. So who's going to do that? I've heard some suggestions that maybe the Reserve Bank should do that. That's not their function. Uh, that's not their... Uh, they, they, they don't have the resources or the setup to do that at the moment. 
Um, and they wouldn't necessarily do it any cheaper. Just because they lend to the banks at a lower rate doesn't mean they would lend to the public at that same rate because there would be additional costs. So the reality is we do need the banks. And as you say, they are invested and they have been here for a very long time. They are part of the New Zealand, of New Zealand society. They've been here since the mid to early 1800s. So as you say, they're very invested. They want New Zealand to do well because that's what helps them to do well. Good on you, Claire. I thank you very much indeed for your time and your forthrightness uh, this morning. Have a great day. Okay, thank you. That is Claire Matthews, uh, Associate Professor uh, from uh, Massey University. Good academic out of Massey, isn't that a rare thing? Um, but, so she's basically, what she said was the Prime Minister shooting her mouth off for political gain. It's called a dog whistle. Uh, a dog whistle on the banks, just as much as everyone who is gnashing their teeth about Adrian Ora's dog whistling on the government. So the banks make a profit. Well, of course I want my bank to make a profit. Um, and I know it, make it makes a profit at my expense, but if it doesn't make a profit, I guess it gouges me further. It asks me for more interest rate. Um, do you hate banks? There's a good question.